Just believe yourself. Don't give up. 자, 여러분, 오늘 같이 읽어봤으면 좋을 책이 필리 코틀러의 마켓 5.0입니다. 어, 여러분, 아마 필리 코틀러의 책은 너무나 오랫동안 여러분들이 좋아서 많이 읽으셨을 거예요. 필리 코틀러의 책은 마켓 1.0부터 계속해서 나오고 있었거든요. 자, 이번에 그러면은 5.0은 뭐에 대해서 얘기를 하는 거냐? 그러면 이 휴머니티와 그러니까 인간과 기술이 합쳐지면 뭐가 나와? 이게 뭐냐면 이렇게 필리 코틀러와 함께 연구한 그리고 전 세계 많은 마케터들이 지난 100년간 기다리고 기다리고 기다렸던 마케팅이 하나 있습니다. 뭔지 아십니까? 1대1 마케팅이요. 그러니까 고객이 나한테 10만 명이 있는데 그러면 나한테 뭐가 필요해? 마케터가 10만 명이 필요해요? 아니죠. 자, 우리의 마케팅이 10만 명한 사람 한 사람의 모든 그 사람의 감각과 니즈와 향후 이 사람이 뭘 사고 싶을 것까지도 예측해서 정확히 할수 있는 게뭐 때문에 가능해요? 기술 때문에 가능해진 거예요. 그 모든 기술들이 이제 드디어 드디어 실용 단계에 이르렀고 이제 드디어 쓸수 있다. 그래서 마케터들이 해야 되는 공부가 뭘까요? 두 가지입니다. 기술 다좀 이해해야 돼요. 제가 이완에게 물어봤어요. 얼마나 이해해야 되냐? 너무 어렵다. 그랬더니 그냥 조금씩 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 해나가면 된다고. 근데 누가 빨리 이해하느냐? 그리고 이해한 만큼 그걸 어떻게 해요? 나의 고객에게 1대1로 이 기술을 사용해서 가장 만족된 형태의 마케팅을 선사할 수 있겠죠. 그럼 뭐예요? 고객은 이 사람, 이 기업에게 당연히 떠나지 않고 돈을 주겠죠. 이게 마켓 5.0입니다. 아주 심플하게는 그겁니다. 근데 이걸 어떻게 구현하고 어, 여러분들이 공부하면서 해나갈 수 있을지 쓴 책입니다. 이 책은 일반적으로 마케터들은 반드시 읽어야 되고요. 그냥 뭐라도 하나 조그만 거 하나라도 공구라도 하시는 분 뭐라도 스마트 스토어에서 판매하시는 분이라면 고객이 궁금한 사람이라면 그리고 내가 알고 있는 기술들을 어떻게 활용할까 뭐라도 온라인상에서 뭔가 사업을 하시는 분들이라면 꼭 읽어봤으면 머리가 확 깨이실 겁니다. 어, 마켓 5.0 여러분에게 꼭 추천합니다. 읽어보시기 바랍니다. If you are a marketer, the marketing X point to a series by Philip Kotler is essential reading. Today's guest, Yuan s e t i y u a n has co-authored the three of these books. Marketing 3.0 from product to customer to the human spirit. Marketing 4.0 moving from traditional to digital. The now marketing 5.0 technology for humanity, which is the book we are going to talk about today. It's a real pleasure. Thank you for coming on the show. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nice oh. to meet you, MK. Okay. First of all, could you say yeah. hello to the readers in Korea? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, being in this channel with MK today. Uh, I heard that the book uh, Marketing 5.0 is now available in Korea. I have a copy here with me. Oh, really? So I hope you enjoy the book. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the publisher <laughs> sent it to me. So uh, I have two of these. So this is the original version in English and then the Korean version. Yes, so. I have two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I read your book, Marketing 5.0, last month. It was a great help to me. And your book gave us an idea how to find the ways to use technology to advance customers' non-material needs. I'm sure that after reading your book, and many of your readers will know how to develop marketing strategies in a new digital world. No. So in a nutshell, how is Marketing 5.0 different from Marketing 4.0? Yeah, so uh, Marketing 5.0 is the natural continuation of 4.0. In 4.0, we talk about digital technology, but mainly the basic ones like e-commerce, how to facilitate transaction fee online, how to use social media for marketing, those sort of typical usage of digital technology. But in 5.0, we kind of move further ahead with advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, and so on. So that's the major difference, yeah. Mm. You know, in preparing for this interview, I met a lot of young marketers. Yeah, many young marketers know you already. And they told <laughs> me how much they attended, uh, they wanted to attend your lecture. So it's a real treat having a new sh uh, on the show. So your lecture will be followed by a short Q&A session. Without any further ado, Iwan Satiwan, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so this is Marketing 5.0 in a nutshell. So I'm just going to go straight to it. It's part of a trilogy called Marketing X.0. It started in 2010 when we published 3.0. And then we continue with 2017 Marketing 4.0. And the latest book, which came up in uh, February this year, is Marketing 5.0. And both books, the both previous books has been have been very successful overseas. So what is actually 1.0 to 5.0? Uh, this is a marketing evolution that uh, started with product-driven marketing. So in the beginning, marketing marketing's function is to sell products. Obviously, this is something that a lot of people still think today is the main role of marketing, is to sell products. So you create a product that is perfect for the market, and then uh, you need marketers to actually sell those products to the consumers. But then it began uh, evolving into marketing 2.0, whereas the product itself should be designed with the customer needs in mind. So you have to think about what the customer really needs, kind of segment the market according to their uh, real needs, and then make products, diverse range of products that fits each segment. So in this uh, 2.0, it's sharper. You don't need to essentially create the perfect product, but you create product that's perfect for some segment. Uh, and then it evolves further into marketing 3.0, which is the human-centric marketing. Uh, essentially viewing the customer as the whole human with mind, uh, heart, and spirit. And not only listening to them through market research or uh, going to the market, but you also need to kind of predict it, what they are thinking, what their motivation in life, and kind of use that uh, to create the product, the right product for uh, their anxieties. So this is the 1.0 to 3.0 transformation, which is uh, we think is complete for traditional uh, era. But then we kind of shifted to the digital era in marketing 4.0. Uh, and we said that uh, would it be awesome if we put digital technology on top of these uh, three approaches um, and utilize uh, social media, utilize content marketing online, to kind of communicate uh, the message and also trying to find ideas for new products. And we kind of stepped further ahead with 5.0, uh, utilizing advanced technology, uh, essentially based on artificial intelligence and the derivative uh, technologies uh, involving uh, artificial intelligence or AI. And we think that we need to kind of further the development of this model with the help of technology. Uh, we like to move around, exercise, work with our physical body. Uh, and so we created robotics to kind of help us do the things that are too risky for humans to do. Or maybe we are prone to making too many errors. So we use robots to kind of help us uh, build a better consistency in our work. Uh, we like to imagine things. We like to kind of dream a lot. And so we have augmented reality and virtual reality, which is in combination is called mixed reality. Uh, and we like to connect with one another. Uh, and that's why the machines also like to connect with one another. Uh, and they call it IoT, Internet of Things, uh, or a blockchain. If, if you think about it, it's also about connecting machine with other machines. And this is all what I call the next tech. And if you use these next technology uh, across the five A's, across the new customer experience, uh, and that is marketing 5.0, essentially implementing advanced technology across uh, helping customers uh, build awareness, create attraction, uh, helping them when they ask questions, facilitating them when they want to buy our product and services, and helping them to advocate our products and services. The rest of the time, I would like to also talk about specific elements of the practice with some examples. I will give you five examples of each of these elements from data-driven marketing, predictive marketing, contextual marketing, augmented marketing, and agile marketing. So let's start with uh, data-driven marketing. There is a big box retailer in the US called Target. And Target 
uh, is very advanced in the way they do uh, data-driven marketing. They collected data from consumer transaction and they kind of spotted a, a specific pattern in which if, if, if a specific customer, a woman, bought uh, at least five of 29 items um, in their shopping bag, uh, they can predict if that woman is pregnant or not or expecting a child. Wow. So that is uh, a model that has been developed for many years and it's getting sharper each each year. Uh, and so there's a story, this is an interesting story where Target actually figured out a teen girl was pregnant even when the family uh, was not aware of it. So this is something that is uh, powerful uh, in terms of how you use data. Number two, uh, in product development, you usually... Uh, likes to test the market before you kind of uh, do a big launch of the new product. But what if we can do it uh, the reverse way? What if we can predict the success of the product before we even launch it? And the way they do it is, uh, this is an example of PepsiCo. They do what we call predictive marketing. Uh, they analyze millions and millions of conversation on social media and predicted a pattern that is on the rise. For example, if a specific flavor of snack is on the rise in, in terms of conversation on social media, and they think it will sustain for at least six months, uh, they will kind of create that product right away uh, and it will be successful because people are talking about it. So it's not recording what's in the past in terms of conversation, but it's kind of predict the future by looking at uh, existing conversation going on in social media. Number three is, uh, this is probably quite useful useful technology as well. Uh, Walgreens is a pharmacy in the US uh, and in their beverage section, they have this uh, coolers or refrigerators with screens uh, uh, in front of it. And those screens give recommendation of, of products to buy for people uh, that is facing the refrigerator. They use a technology where they put a camera uh, on, on the screen and the camera will pick up the demographic profile of each customer, whether the person is Asian, Hispanic, or uh, Asia, uh, Black, Asian American, and so on. Uh, the age bracket, is, is it a teenager? Is it a, a young professional? Uh, is it men or women? And then based on that, those demographic profile uh, and also other information such as the weather outside, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, they can give recommendation of which not only beverage, but, what also, uh, but also food that is suitable for the occasion. And this is what we call contextual marketing, meaning that marketing will be more personalized in the future where uh, not only based on your demographic profile, but it could also be based on who you are uh, in terms of your identity, and they can give you a more personalized recommendation uh, in the physical space. Number four is augmented marketing. So uh, in augmented marketing, we say that uh, you know, humans are really good in terms of building relationship. If you are trying to replace salespeople with machines, they're not going to be uh, very successful because human built relationship with other humans. Uh, but human have capacity, for example, for data anal analysis, for lead generation, for identifying whether this customer is really worth it to pursue. Uh, and once we kind of figure out, okay, okay, this guy is worth it uh, to pursue further. Uh, this is the good. Uh, it's a good customer to uh, manage. Uh, and then we can kind of transfer those leads to human. And that is called augmented marketing, in which we kind of help humans with their limitation in terms of capacity, in terms of their consistency. And we help them with digital technology that are more consistent uh, and, and better in terms of working uh, routines or working on uh, specific jobs uh, uh, in, in the workplace. Uh, so this is called augmented marketing, which means augmenting your capability as humans with digital technology. And finally, agile marketing. And this word agile is being used in tech companies, uh, as well as software companies uh, around the world. 
but not many people know that agile marketing is something that fashion companies uh, is using as well, especially fast fashion chain. The way they do it is that they uh, monitor conversation on social media, and based on their conversation, based on the conversation, based on what happens in fashion week, what happens on the streetwear scene, they kind of built a pattern that they give to their designers to give them inspiration, and then their designer will work on uh, the design. At the same time, they're sourcing the material. At the same time, the factory is resetting. Uh, the configuration, and at the same time, when they all finish, the designer finished the design, and the factory is ready, and the material is being purchased, they can start right away the manufacturing process and then send it through uh, to their uh, channels worldwide. And it's been being done every two mm -hmm. weeks. So this is a very fast cycle. And this is called agile marketing, in which we do things quickly. We don't really waste a lot of time. Uh, we want to do it really, really uh, in a lean way, uh, as in a tech startup. So you can really see results in real time. You don't have to wait three months or six months to see results because when, whenever you do the cycle faster, the results will come faster as well. So those are um, the elements of uh, Marketing 5.0. And that's all I have uh, with me uh, today. If you have any question, MK, go ahead. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So now I know what I need to prepare for the future. Your lecture made me realize I have a lot of studying to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of studying to do. So you emphasize that despite the in-depth discussion on technology, it's important to note that humanity should remain the central focus of marketing 5.0. Yeah. But understanding the human mind is at the very least, extremely difficult as a marketer. Mm -hmm. um, how do we go about focusing on yeah. humanity? Is there a particular mindset do we need to have? Uh, yeah, actually, to understand humans, there is no better way than to observe their behavior. There, there's a distinction between asking people uh, and listening to their response and actually watching their behavior. Sometimes if you do a research and you ask people questions, uh, they answer the politically correct answer, but not essentially the truth. So if you, if you research a hundred men that goes into the toilet, and then when they came out, you ask them, did you wash your hands? And a hundred percent will say yes. Even though if you put a camera inside the toilet, you might see a few people actually forgot to wash their hands. Um, and the politically correct answer is to always say, yes, I wash my hands. But in reality, people's behavior is not always the same as the one they, they talk about. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of uh, see the behavior. And the way technology is helping is that uh, traditionally, if we watch behavior, we kind of look at it physically uh, with our, our eyeballs. Uh, but now technology can kind of pick up patterns of behavior. Uh, looking at transaction data, you can understand whether people shop on weekdays or weekends, whether they shop at 1 p.m. or 2 p.m., how frequent they shop, what's the basket size. You kind of uh, have all that information uh, in your database. And uh, the way we kind of complement that as a human being is try to understand the motive behind that uh, patterns of behavior. That is something that computers will never be able to do oh. because to, to kind of uh, explain why we are doing what we're doing, it has to be human as well because yeah. human understand humans and we are the only one who understands how we think as a human being. Uh, and so if you look at data, if you look at patterns of behavior, uh, it is always best to kind of look at it from the perspective of human minds uh, and try to understand why exactly are we doing those sort of behavior. Uh, and that's really the key to understand uh, the humans. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly right. While there are businesses that are fully embracing the digital experience, mm -hmm. but there are still many small businesses that are hesitant and afraid to go through digitalization. Perhaps the small small yeah, business owner and their customers find 
the daunting to go this tall. So what advice would you give to this business or this small business owner? Right. Um, the companies often uh, is uh, afraid of embarking on a, a complex digital transformation because they always think when they hear digital transformation, it's going to be big and huge, time consuming, expensive. Uh, and I think to kind of break that uh, incorrect mindset is to really start small. Uh, you need to have quick wins in order for people to see results right away. Uh, don't go on a, on a big transformation. Just start with a small division, small team, and then see results. In the consumer side, it is always about trying it, right? Consumers are always afraid of trying thing, something that's new, but if you can kind of push them with incentive, uh, it could be very uh, uh an efficient, it could be a very efficient way to do it. Uh, a lot of times, many, many tech companies use approach of giving free goods or free services mm -hmm. in terms of freemium, for example, mm -hmm. or they give a, a discount as a financial incentive for people to try that product. And once they kind of hook with that product, they like it, they love it, uh, you really don't need the incentive anymore. So you can kind of... Uh, uh, eliminate the discounts because they have seen results. And again, with consumers and with companies, it's really important to let them try in a small way, uh, like uh, like sampling it. And then once they kind of liked it, um, it, it, it is really easy to to kind of expand from that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you said that. Uh... You're studying it, start, just study it lean way and the small way is the important, it is important yeah. to start, okay? So I tell you something, then I'm, I have a many uh, consumer and then kind of customer. The One of the customer is some kinds of bank in Korea. And then they, they have many old consumers, okay? So they always yeah, go to a bank and then yeah, doing something. But nowadays they want to, their customer to do on application, mm. their application. Right. They, they made a lot of application, but the mm. old people, they don't know. They, are, they have no right. idea how to use. No? What I always say is technology should help people do their job easy, in an easier way. Uh, it has to make people's life easier. Um, so when technology is very hard to use, uh, then it's not a good technology. Okay. Because a, a good technology is something that is user-friendly. Even your grandma should be able to use it. That's great. Okay, so next question. Uh, it's becoming more and more difficult to track user data now with right. new policies by Google and Apple, mm -hmm. for example. From marketers' perspective, how can you gain access to customer needs and data with all these new restrictions? Yeah, I think the restriction is really, really, uh, it's, it's somewhat of a dilemma. Uh, you have to protect the privacy of your customers. So in, in that sense, it's the right way to do it, to kind of limit the use of data, the way you track your customers. But it also limits the ability of marketing people to uh, uh, create personalized recommendation because that's the main usage of the data is to understand who you are as a customer and then deliver the right personalized uh, products and services. But I think one of the key things that I would like to share is that most people think that data is online. It's true that most data is online, but if you think about it, most transaction is actually offline. Mm. Yeah, right. In the U.S., for example, e-commerce only contributes about 15% of the entire retail transactions. Mm -hmm. So 85% is actually uh, still offline. Oh. And in China, I think they have the largest e-commerce proportion to total retail. It's about 25%. So 75% is still offline. Um, and so if you think about it, you need, really need to combine the data you have from the online interaction with the data you have from physical interaction. In Southeast Asia, there is this uh, tech startup that is quite innovative, it's called Snapcard. And the way uh, they do their services is that 
people, when they buy things, they get a receipt. And if you scan the receipt, you get points, okay. which you can spend. Uh, and those receipts, they can, uh, it's easy to read. And when you scan a receipt, it's easy to uh, spot, for example, you buy a, a Coca-Cola, two cans, uh, you buy a diaper and so on and so forth. You, you can kind of build a database of what people buy. And they, they sell those data to companies. Uh, and they say, I bridge a uh, physical transaction with online data because uh, most transactions are actually happening uh, uh, in physical space, but most data will end up being online. So you kind of have to bridge that. Mm, that's a good idea. Wow. Yeah, it's very insightful. So this is the last question today. At my company, we also have many young marketers who aspire to be the best. So could you give them some advice to become okay. a great marketer? <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, one thing is that you, you need to always keep up with the latest development. Uh, you don't want to be uh, falling behind, especially if you're still young. Yeah. Uh, you still have a lot of capacity to learn new things. Uh, secondly, I think whenever an opportunity comes your way, never say no. Never refuse any requests whatsoever. Right because that's how I ended up meeting Phil Kotler and writing books, <laughs> uh, is say yes to every single request. Um, and when you started to find uh, what you do best, do it consistently. It doesn't matter whether you like it or not. If you're really good at it, uh, you will eventually love it because you know there's nothing more satisfying than doing the things that you do best. It's not essentially doing the things you love, but doing the things you do best. If you're really good at it, you will eventually fall in love with it. Yeah, it will be really great advice for them. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. I'm glad that we had this chance to prepare for the future in marketing with you, with Iwan. And this is truly helpful, not only for the marketers, but also for average person. So next time, I hope to see you again soon. In Korea. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. I would love to meet you in person, MK. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Stay safe and stay healthy. You too. Thank okay. you. Bye. 자, 여러분, 이, 그, 댓글 이벤트를 좀 할까요, 우리? 어, 마켓 5.0. 어, 이 책을 받고 싶으신 분들은 지금부터 작은 숙제를 하나 내겠습니다. 아, 여러분들이, 어, 요즘에 요즘에 쓰고 있는 마켓에서 우리가 마케팅에서 쓰고 있는 기술 있잖아요 테크놀로지 아는 거두 개만 써보십시오 아까 제가 막 얘기했잖아요 그러면 그분들 중에서 어, 열 분을 추첨해서 이 책을 보내드리도록 하겠습니다 요약본을 받고 싶으시다면 이것을 클릭하세요